On today's program, we celebrate some anniversary. I don't even know which one. Eon seven, six, 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 I don't know. We've been on the air for a long time. Sure, and, uh, hey, that, one, one year. One year. One Finally. The baby New Year. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, it's the We Hate Movies anniversary show. I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Chris Gavin. And We Hate Movies. Movies on the Sideshow Network. Thank you for tuning in to the program as always. Like we said up top, it's the We Hate Movies anniversary show. We started at some point around now, back in the, the year of our Lord 2010, and we're still on the air. We're happy that you're still with us or just finding us. And uh, we thought, hey, what better way? You know, I think I'm still kind of just finding myself. Yeah, you know? that's all right. Yeah, that's this all right. is a self searching podcast. <laughs> Soul searching. It's, uh, you know, it's eat, eat, eat. Uh, as opposed to Eat, Pray, Love, yeah, a book yes. that came out five years ago <laughs> and a movie that came out three years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, so we decided what better way to celebrate the anniversary than talk about what I deem, at least, another we love movie oh, situation. This is 1993's Demolition Man, directed by Marco Brambia. You may know him as the director of Excess Baggage, the but au- probably not. The auteur, excuse me, the auteur <laughs> behind Excess Baggage. What That's a horse shit, stupid fucking Benicio. So you base your writings on auteur theory because <laughs> you are a film critic. Yes. And of on, on Excess Baggage? Uh, yes. I believe it is a, uh, a, a masterwork of garbage. <laughs> I don't believe in the auteur theory, but that's not uh, yeah, what we're here to I. talk about. I am also a, a film truther. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. We're here to talk about this movie, which for anyone who doesn't remember this classic, Steve Sadak, what are we talking about here? Uh, it's a 1993 action sci-fi romp. Uh, <laughs> oh, with, romp is yeah. right. Uh, with uh, Sylvester Stallone and uh, Wesley Snipes get frozen and then they come back in the future and the future is full of all these sissy Marys that don't hold, have any Wait, guns. What? No, they, 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 got, they, got, they got no guns. That's the whole theory of this movie is yeah. that we've been, we become a pussified society. Molly coddled, I'd call it. Because because there's no guns. Guns are in museums. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. As is, you know, sexual intercourse. That's out the window. <laughs> <laughs> there That's, should be a sexual intercourse. I mean, there are sexual intercourse in museums, but, you know. Yeah, I mean, are there? There are, right? Yeah, there's the, the Museum, museum, of, museum sex of Sex downtown. Why I have to would, fucking see posters for that every day I of my life. S- find a Museum of Sex in my own house. <laughs> What do I need to go to a museum? What, your external hard drive? (laughs) (laughs) Uh Uh-oh. Eric through the ages. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Into the terabyte. (laughs) Go deeper into the terabyte. (laughs) It's like an interactive museum, and you're like swimming through the code. Oh, swimming through the code (laughs) is deep. Your lawnmower man, Pierce Brosnan, is just like, Eric, you got to get out of here. Eric, you got to get out of there. It's going to swallow you whole. I don't know how you... (laughs) Oh, it's going to swallow him whole, all right. That is actually the only film I masturbate to. (laughs) Lawnmower man. Oh, it's that Fahey action, right? Man, yeah, I'm fucking Fahey'd out. At least for this day. <laughs> so we start in the near future of 1996. That's cool. Oh, man. Yeah. Imagine that. Those days, <laughs> the, the, the good old days. I like how they're like, oh, you know, it would be crazy. It would be great. As we're in Clinton's first term, it would be crazy to know what Clinton's second term looks like. It's like <laughs> there's literally no difference. But, the, well, the difference is the Hollywood sign is on fire. Oh, yeah. In this timeline. Yeah. Because it's like LA's a war zone, and here comes Sylvester Stallone to fucking save the day. And they say that, like, you can't land aircrafts in LA anymore. Yeah. Commercial flights can't land there anymore. Because the city is just that much on fire. But we also, but we already have this cryo jail thing set up. That is amazing. Like, think about the science involved in just three years from this move. Like, that's a tight schedule. And. <laughs> The cost. What yeah, does it oh, cost to freeze God, a the person? Cost. The culture, it just doesn't make any sense. Cryo jail 
at the same time that Eagle Eye Cherry is burning up the charts. <laughs> I just don't correlate. Yeah, that's that. a great that's, point. That's a world I want to live in. <laughs> Celeste Shalone has to go, oh, I don't know, Huxley was just saved in a- this is pretty damn good. Right, the break of dawn, <laughs> come tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'll be gone, gone save today. today. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, is that Simon Phoenix? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I gotta stop this karaoke. But like, you need it to be a thing where it's like, okay, there's a new test technology, experimental yes, technology. You're the, first yeah. one. you're the fucking first one to do it. Not like it's the same as throwing them in the slammer. Or, I mean, start your movie in 2025 or 2050. 30 and then go 70 years from no, there Steve, because, because then the rest of the movie no, might even make no, a little bit of no, sense no 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 okay, okay because the nearer the near future is uh-huh. the more terrifying oh i see and mm-hmm. urgent the message is do you guys remember in 1996 when we were every now this was everyone in the country was like oh yeah. my god today's the day that stallone cryo froze in uh <laughs> demolition man <laughs> were we it's, counting down stuff back then because i feel that's a product of the internet the only yeah. way you could do that was to mail a zine to somebody and they're like what the hell did i do with this zine <laughs> yeah you need a buzzfeed to do that i think so, or it's some or meme even Man, I, I'm glad that that Back to the Future 2 day has come and gone because I was getting sick and tired of what idiots you, wait, falling you, for that. What are you talking about? Today's the day. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Idiots falling for that. <laughs> I mean, demolition, you know, by the time, what are we, 50? And, like, we'll still be on Facebook because we'll be losers. And yeah. it'll be like, ah, oh, today's the day Demolition Man happened and I'll fucking throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's counting down Demolition Man. <laughs> Somebody will. We're, no, we have to. If we're doing all that other shit. So, because what, August 2036? 32, I think. 32, 32 yeah. 32. 32. Yeah, 16 oh, yeah, that, more that years. Makes, yeah. um, Wasn't it 2046? 2032. No, that's a Wong Kar Wai movie. Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, what a fucking flub. Uh, uh, Art house flub. Stallone pa- jumps into Bungies. this war. Bungie into this war zone. <laughs> and let me tell you about this bungee jump. This is a classic case of we're making a movie for the year 1993. You better believe that's a stuntman jumping out of a helicopter. <laughs> Absolutely. No computer to be found there. Thank you very much. And on the top of the docket of like, so he's getting flown to this war zone by Grandel Bush and some other guy. Oh, yeah, and I wish he was getting blown. Oh, wow, that was Grandel Bush. It Pretty was. Sure. Die Hard's yeah. Grandel Bush. A, a young Zachary Lamb, who we'll meet a little later in the movie. Oh, oh right. Yeah. yeah. Um, the first thing, like, okay, anybody here is, uh, well, my, uh, my idea is to bungee <laughs> down onto the fiery roof of this dilapidated building, and uh, then I- I'm going to get, get Simon that way. Yeah, yeah, just me. Yeah, just me. First thing, I'd be like, no, you're not doing that. We're going uh, to land somewhere, and you're going to get out. That is how this is going to happen. I don't want your death on my hands. Also, his last words, he's in this doing this perilous thing, is feed it! <laughs> yeah. Which is like, if I hate you so much, I don't want my last word to be Phoenix. Well, I think it's so like when he dies on impact and just... <laughs> He keeps going straight to hell. He's still yelling down to hell for his mortal enemy. If he, if he were to hit one of the corners of this building, <laughs> he wants his last words on this were to be his mortal enemy. He should have at least hit like a goose. <laughs> like a Canadian goose. So In he L.A.? Sure. Hey, right. hey. Hey, it's the not too distant future. Things <laughs> oh. are a little crazy. Yeah, that's right. Who knows what those geese were uh, up to? Fucking geese, man. Ever since Phoenix took over, it's nothing but geese. <laughs> Fe- Simon Phoenix and his fucking geese gang. <laughs> oh, so am I the only one who's seen a lot more hedgehogs around here? <laughs> <laughs> Raccoons during the daytime. I don't know what's going on. Fuck a Phoenix, man. Guys got control of all the animals. Cats and dogs living together. Um, So he goes in, and apparently Simon Phoenix has uh, hijacked a bus full of 30 uh, uh, passengers, and Stallone's trying to get him. Wouldn't it be great if it was 57 passengers? Oh, that would be great. And they they can't go below 55 miles an hour. (laughs) Is and all of a sudden, they all started getting really uncomfortably racist out of nowhere, like Passenger 57. Yeah, and then ends in a carnival for some reason, <laughs> like Passenger 57. It's how he set on a plane, ends at a carnival. Sure. It ties that and Child's Play 3 together. Right? Yeah, that's exactly right. That makes That's why it makes an intelligent double feature. Is it? 
is this the first appearance of uh, Sir Wesley Snipes on this podcast? I think so. Is it possible? Oh, that's oh. a great question. Yeah, yeah, quite possibly. It might be actually. He is a treasure. I, I love me some Wesley Snipes. I mean, sure. 90s yeah. Wesley Snipes. I mean, I don't know what Not he's doing. Not like post went to jail for tax fraud. Yeah. Wesley Snipes. I think it ends around Blade Two. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the last. Certainly doesn't time. carry over to Blade Three. No, no, not at all. Is that his last great movie? I think Blade Two. It certainly wasn't that Gallo Walkers movie. No, or that. Uh, you remember that Chris Cabin? He was, was like a. It was a cowboy shit. vampire hunter. Oh, that's fun. that's like five of his movies. <laughs> <laughs> but like also like uh, what what's like he was in that one of the expend the third Expendables. Yeah, that sounds about right. He was awful in that. He was yep. like in a in a drama there, uh, Brooklyn's Finest or something. Oh, that was horrible. Yeah. So oh, you know what he's really good in? Isn't that an Antoine Fuqua movie? Very well, might uh, be. You no, know he's really good in Chirac. Oh, that's Ooh, right. He, he is, is excellent in Chirac. Yeah, really that's right. Chirac. That's right. So he's still got. He's I, he's just great. I mean, like he always acted better than most of the Hollywood tough guys because he's yes. just literally a better actor. Yeah, he got kicked out of our alma mater. That's right. Purchase College. But he's, he's also and he's also. I mean, he's. A black belt, like he's actually a fighter, and he knows how to do that stuff. That's what, to- that's what you forget about Wesley Snipes, though. And I forgot about it watching this movie. He starts legit kicking ass, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, you can do that." Well, did you read the Tribune about this? Oh, no, shit. I missed about it. how he had to slow. He he's so good at it. He had to slow down his kicks because it was blurry on the camera. Are you oh, kidding me? So he had to like very like, okay, Stallone, here we here we go. Here's it coming. Here's sure, it coming. Make sure I win this fight, though. It's very important to me. And he's still in pretty good shape. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Compare him to other black belts like Steven Seagal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dough belt. Well, he's not eating ham Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, and onward. <laughs> well, he, well, he's trying to find himself. Eat, eat, eat. <laughs> what is with the character design of Simon Phoenix? They, yeah, we're having fun. Because he's got a Meteor Man gang haircut. Yeah, Whatever no. the gang from Meteor Man was, you remember all those folks? Yeah. So, weren't they run by Don Cheadle? They might have, or Don Cheadle was in them. Uh, wasn't James Earl Jones farting around He's in that his neighbor. Movie? Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't remember. But it's, blonde, like high and tight kind of thing. There's it a looks ru- terrible. There's a rumor that Dennis Rodman, I mean, Dennis Rodman did start dyeing his hair after this movie came out, and they think it's because he liked this movie oh, so much. That's fucking funny. That is funny. Wow. Um, but then he's also got these, like, denim overalls. Yeah. He looks ridiculous he's, through all of this movie. He's kind of just the Joker. If you close your, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he is For just, sure. and I think Wesley Snipes would have done an awesome Joker, actually. Uh, can you fucking believe that they hired a b- 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 black guy to play the Joker? Mom, Mom get in here. <laughs> I'm definitely only seeing this movie twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, exactly. That's it, that's it. I'm, not, I'm only buying the special edition Blu-ray. I'm not buying the combo pack. They're not going to get shit out of me. They try. The, I'm not going to fucking fall for your ultraviolet download, you fascist. That's a medium popcorn, no butter. <laughs> Yeah, butter. It'd Put be- a little hole in it for mom. Yeah, oh. Get in there. I'll figure it out, mom. Mom's coming to the movies. I'm gonna, I might Stop get coming ag- at the movies. I might get agitated because there's a black guy on screen playing a character that's traditionally white. Uh, do that's you- traditionally a clown with makeup well, on. Well, do, you, do you think after his mom jerks him off and he ejaculates, <laughs> is he still eating that popcorn? This oh, guy, yes, yeah. he is. Oh, yeah. Just a little more shopping. Just for the spite of it. <laughs> oh, Lord, that's so, disgusting. So, well, for anyone who's left, what go. happens next in the movie? It's our anniversary yeah, We're having a little fun show. here. Hey, hey. Hey, take off your pants. <laughs> We're talking about museums of sexes <laughs> and numerous other things. We haven't even got to the hunk of junkie yet. So he gets, um, I mean, there's there's a bunch of action scenes. Um, uh, Wesley Snipes sets his ass on fire, which is pretty dope. Pretty great. Uh, uh, and the whole building blows up and like uh, Stallone thinks he's won the day. Uh, and then sure enough, whoops, all those. Uh, uh, 30 passengers were in the building. Stallone gets blamed for uh, setting the building on fire, even though clearly he wouldn't have done that. Also, but Well, like, he's got the nickname of the Demolition Man. His, his uh. chief says, I'm sick of this Demolition Man shit! I got sick of people saying Demolition Man in this movie. I got a count of five. 
Oh, yeah, five times they say dude, Demolition it, Man. It's five easy, though. And five a, in like wait, the first wait, 15 is minutes. It five easy pieces? <laughs> no, it's not Jack Nicholson playing a piano on the back of a truck. <laughs> yeah, put this chicken between your, your knees. And, uh, <laughs> uh, what's my line? <laughs> hey, Bob. So you, you're telling me I leave this chicken in the bathroom, right? <laughs> oh, and then I could go on the road and start arm wrestling people. All right. <laughs> that's that's the, that's the uh, genesis of over the top. Oh, oh that makes right. sense. I left the lady in the bathroom and I started arm wrestling my way to the greater United States. <laughs> <laughs> you could take the take the Super Mario Brothers, <laughs> put Judge Dredd on there, <laughs> keep the Rob Schneider, <laughs> take away everything else. <laughs> That's demolition. Know. It's like that chicken chicken salad. Oh, oh, oh I see. Right in the yes. Chicken, right in the chicken salad. <laughs> right in the chicken salad. So the sentence, of course, is you're going to be frozen for seventy years. Is the sentence, and yeah, which is right down the road, apparently. And there's this guy, William Smithers, who's the uh, the the what do you call it there? The warden or the right. under warden at the time? Under like, warden. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, who's like? They're all doing the whole like. We're so sorry because we know you're a great cop, but get naked. We're going to freeze you. Yeah, for a bad policing. Yeah. 70 years in the isotubes. This, by the way, this is a lot of this is Judge Dredd. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? We got, we're freezing people in, in two, in, 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 in like tubs. And uh, we have we'll Sylvester get Stallone. Sylvester Stallone and Rob Schneider. But Ugh. also, we have a mega city because they call it San Angeles. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah. So it's it's like the entire east, the western seaboard. Which mega is, city two, which we don't see in uh, in the uh, what do you exactly. Call it? Maybe is this in this? Oh my god, is this in the same two thousand eighty universe where oh. Stallone and Schneider are having fun on the east coast, <laughs> but so they're also fun. having fun on the west coast? Because it's kind of. <laughs> It's kind of like, what is it? It's like a city-state, right, Chris? Well, it's like three places that... The Great Earthquake of 2010, which has dropped three times in this fucking movie, <laughs> merged these three places together. Yes. And right. then they were just like, all right, it's one place. George fuck it. San yeah, Angeles? Fuck it. Yeah, whatever. How that... about Los Francisco? <laughs> no. <laughs> the uh, the freezing scene's kind of fun, right? It's it's iconic as far as uh, well, Demolition he's, Man he's, goes. As far as beautiful butts go. <laughs> well, Do that... you want to know how iconic and how beautiful the butt is? Oh, what's that? So when I was a kid... I know, used, I know where we're going. I, know, I think sorry. I've told this on the air before, but it's it's important to this episode. It's an anniversary show. Sure, yeah. It's, this, is a, this is the clip part. Roll the clip where I tell the story again. <laughs> no, when you went into the Myrtle Beach Planet Hollywood, which was shaped like a gigantic globe, which was hilarious. Uh-huh. It was, I mean, this town, it's fucking trash central. Because in the same parking lot, you had a giant globe, which was the Planet Hollywood. You had a massive pyramid, which was the Hard Rock Cafe. Oh, Jesus. And then you had a massive stadium-shaped building, which was the All-Star Cafe. <laughs> All in the same fucking complex. So you had three places where you could go with your family to get subpar chicken wings. You know what that is? That's called now? Shantytown. Yeah. Not, none of that's left. <laughs> so anyway, when you went into this Planet Hollywood, they had the prize of Stallone That's frozen amazing. in the thing above the lobby and you could totally you're like you know I'm waiting for my mozzarella stick to see this dude taint <laughs> yo, yo dude 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 it have a dick it, you couldn't see. It. Oh, it was like frosted at that point or whatever. Well, that's, it was a little frosted, but frosted you could tell there was dick. definite fucking butt cheeks just like right there. Well, that it's the same thing with this one. You can definitely clearly make out an asshole and yeah. a ball sack. <laughs> and tank. You, but oh, when, you're making out a boy, you're making out a ball sack. There was definitely a ball sack. There is, there was, is a little bit of a bump. A bump. Really? Yeah, yeah. there's a bump. Oh, Gee, I gotta, gotta go back. Gotta do a frame by frame. But when podcast. you do the over <laughs> the overhead shot of him, like going, yeah, don't drown me in lube. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's. A, it's a it's a sticky substance. He gets <laughs> drowning KY jelly. <laughs> he tell you. Wait, is this? A, the, the, are you sure you weren't in the Museum of Sex? <laughs> oh man, I hope not. But the what? The, the no. overall shot you can you like he, he you see him quickly like yeah, going gets, down so nobody can see his dick. Nobody can see my dick. Hey. But he just like, clear the room to do that though. He's unnaturally like folding himself. He looks like a cat laying down. <laughs> he does. He's like getting into a ball. Why just, does he need to be naked? I don't like. You know what? Get, get a wait, pair of on, boxer dude. briefs on. Do you want wet clothes <laughs> yeah. when you get out of this? In That's seven true. Years? Also, <laughs> little advice: 
maybe knock him out first. Yeah, a maybe sedative. just a, a mild sedative. sedative yeah. Yes, Dude, put him it's out. Terif- I mean, this the KY is filling up in this bathtub, and he's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like it's the it's some of the best acting Stallone's ever done. He's terrified. It'd be awesome if he farted in it. Well, because he <laughs> just like a frozen bubble. Well, he's afraid because he's on the set of Devolution Man. The next day, it's like Stallone dies in lube tub. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure it's Astro Glide. <laughs> The weird thing is, what is this special? They need to tell me what this blue thing is. That's, That's like, what activates the, the freezing. quick freeze. Like, is it a dragon's tear? Like, where is this coming from? <laughs> yeah, it's an ice dragon's tear. Oh, okay. It's found north of the wall. Yeah, okay. That makes that makes a whole lot of sense. We gotta yeah. go get those dragon tears so we can freeze these convicts. <laughs> Jon Snow, get off your lazy ass and get out there and get me all all the dragon tears. <laughs> We're gonna freeze tears. this whole fucking city. <laughs> So Stallone goes, and then well, like I don't know how you get him. Tell him, tell him a sad story. <laughs> I, I put on uh, beaches. Uh, that always got me. So. You get up to that dragon and just start cutting some onions in front of his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Works know. for me when I'm I, making I'll send, sauce. I'll send you a bushel of onions for King's Landing. Why did you play that song Christmas shoes for him? It's around the holidays. A dragon, a little girl can't wear shoes or whatever hey. happens. Hey. Yeah, what's the problem with that song? She's got fucked up feet. <laughs> I think her mute? mom died or something, right? What does that have to do with shoes? That's it, that's it, maybe I, you know she I took wish, the shoes with her. Yeah, they, <laughs> oh man, she was buried <laughs> with the shoes. Huh? You got buried six foot deep with those Christmas shoes. <laughs> I don't know what that song's about. I don't know what that song's about either. <laughs> I shouldn't have made that joke, but I, you know, I, I got I four know. words for you: Celine Dion, <laughs> greatest hits. <laughs> Come on, dragon, get crying. Oh, it's good to get sad. It's good to get sad in here, man. <laughs> you feel that, Dragon? You're going to start crying in no time. I'm welling right up. <laughs> uh, why don't we see Wesley Snipes get frozen? That's a good... I want to see that taint. Especially yeah. because... Well, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but because in 1996, like at the beginning of this movie... I said that he's wearing like overalls. Like later in the movie, he's got like denim overalls on. He looks like fucking cousin feet. <laughs> but before that, he is dressed like Beetlejuice. He, yes. he these kind of pants is. that he's got on, dude. These fucking MC Hammer Beetlejuice pants. Yep. Oh, it's awesome. It's good. Freeze him right in those pants and all. And, and he's got, got like busted tires on his fucking shoulder. Like it's fucking really silly. Wait, hold on, hold on, mom. I go, mom, 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 get the demolition man lube because <laughs> Wesley Snipes is playing Beetlejuice. Are you fucking kidding me, mom? That role was originated by Michael Keaton, mom. He's one of our greatest white actors, mom. Get in here. Our oh, greatest man. white See, actors, <laughs> Michael Keaton. <laughs> This is the problem with the internet is you can't like you can't hear them talk and that would just delegitimize their opinions. That Absolutely, I wish, yeah, yeah, because that's what they all sound like. That's exactly what they all sound like. So we cut to the future. It's twenty thirty two. Uh, Andre Gregory is now the war- the guy who but was he's the same guy. He's the same oh, guy. Like- Andre Gregory. Andre Gregory. Yeah. Oh, come on, yeah, dude, <laughs> that's amazing. I Smithers, that. Warden Smithers, yeah. yeah. That was Andre Gregory, and I guess he really he must have given up trying to get Wall Sean like a a role. I yeah, imagine like <laughs> even the chief, like somebody, he probably really campaigned for him. So, do you think this is a reference to that? Like, like he's the prison warden because of that one great uh, line in uh, my dinner with Andre about <laughs> New York being the prison of the new world. And- oh wow! Yeah, it's <laughs> great. Anyway, watch my dinner with Andre. It's, yes, you it's should. Great, watch it. It's a it's good, really movie, good movie. Yeah. Um. So we got Sandy Bullock. We're introduced to Sandy Bullock. She's a cop in this movie who's obsessed with the quote vulgar twentieth century. Yeah. Let's get into it. So it's only thir- it's. Tw- I mean, like, uh, well, let's discount. They're not we wrong. know we know <laughs> they're not wrong. It we was know vulgar. we know that twenty sixteen. You know, we're only sixteen years away, so it's not that far. But it's even in nineteen ninety three when this movie came out, we're talking thirty years tops. Like. That's what doesn't make any sense. I know what the 70s was. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the biggest, like, flub of this movie is every character is like, bah. 
Twentieth <laughs> century? They're like they're well, on fucking Star Trek. To be fair, there was apparently you know the L.A. riots never ended. Of course, uh, the city devoured itself. Then there was the big one. I guess everyone died, and these are like including this- Stallone's wife. And everyone in this is like the Christmas shoes orphan, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the impossible Christmas shoes orphan. And the 20th century is like this mythical place where their parents were alive and they had shoes. <laughs> but we also don't know what the deal is with the rest of the country, you know, or the world. Yes. It's, yeah. They're, well, they're, they're, I think there might be a cursed earth. And uh, that's Mega you know City what? One. If you ever needed reason for a fucking scroll, yeah, dude, yep. yeah. mm-hmm. get and you know what? It can come after this prologue. Yeah. Like, the prologue happens. He gets frozen. Demolition Man, the graphic comes up. By the way, these fucking opening credits look like 16-bit SNES garbage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a dumb font. And then it's just scroll through some James Earl telling me how it is. No, that's where you get your Wallace Shaw. Oh, yeah, Wallace Shaw. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so after the great earthquake of 2010... Inconceivable, right? <laughs> well, how much longer can I milk that? <laughs> Yay! And Sandy's here, too. <laughs> <laughs> so she loves the 20th century. She's sure. obsessed with it. I mean, the, the society is like a... You know, it's a it's a ultra peaceful... There's no violence. There's no swearing. You can't do anything. Anything that's, quote-unquote, bad for you is yes. against the can't law. Can't drink, no drugs. No, just, no, do- no table salt. No table salt because it's bad for you. No caffeine because it's bad for you. No can, sexual intercourse. Can I just drive to Seattle and fuck? Like, how does that work? Like, what's I, going on in Seattle? Can I just kill myself? How about oh, that? So is, that, is, that uh, is that legal still? Because uh, I would like to do that. I think that's uh, against the law. Knock yourself out, Chris. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's a great question. Though. Like, can I drive to Seattle and fuck? Mm-hmm. Or is it just... Blow like, rails? You know, sure. everything, dude. You come back with a cool t shirt as I was blowing rails in Seattle. Who's rails? Is this, guy, is this a guy you guys That's know? my dealer. <laughs> that t shirt has a, a picture of somebody like snorting it off of a laid down space needle. <laughs> oh, yeah. I blew rails in the Emerald City. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the, very quickly, Wesley Snipes is uh, released from prison, and you don't necessarily know why. Right. Uh, we'll get there. And um, he, like, knows all the passcodes. And the passcode, by the way, while, while, while this dangerous criminal is awakened and he's getting, uh, uh, I guess, Andre Gregory is grilling him about, like, his crimes, <laughs> he says the word teddy bear, and all the things break open. And he's like, and then one of the guys is like, how'd you know the passcode? Well, it shouldn't be verbal and it shouldn't be fucking teddy bear. Because who, like, oh, you know, uh, like someone comes in one night like, oh, Lenny, uh, it's, your, it's your daughter's birthday. What'd you get her as a present? Oh, I got her a teddy bear. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 oh, we're all dead. Yeah. yeah. All of Arkham is out now. <laughs> yeah, because you said teddy bear. Oh, yeah. You know uh, that teddy, the real bear. <laughs> <laughs> We see Sandy's office space that she's got, and it's, like, decked out with... Uh, and you're speaking of Sandra Bullock, the actress. Sandra Bullock, of course. Oscar winner. Uh, is, that, is that a fact? Mm-hmm. All right, the blind uh, side. The blind side. Yeah, who saw that <laughs> coming? Man, I was fucking blindsided yeah. by that win. Yeah, <laughs> yup. <laughs> and her name is Huxley, after all. Dude. Oh, I didn't get that, Chris. Uh, you didn't get that? <laughs> My brain fell out before I watched the movie. <laughs> oh, man, you gotta pick that up. <laughs> Dust it off. Uh yeah, so she's like got all these trinkets. She she's like working at the the uh the cafe from Back to the Future too. <laughs> yeah. The cafe eighties basically. But awesome details. She's got a sweet Lethal Weapon three poster in her office. Nice. And the chief at the beginning of the movie who like basically deems Stallone gets arrested is the fucking captain yeah. from the Lethal Weapon movies. Oh. Look at that. Yeah. Nice little and connection. Little yep. synergy. I and think then, that's like a, that, that's got to be like a Joel Silver connection. I imagine something. To, I mean, but also, uh, I think one of the writers might have also had Uh-oh. something to do with the Lethal Weapon. These writers. <laughs> uh, but also in that uh, very same uh, office is a poster of uh, Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yes. Is oh, that a fact? It. That is a fact. Wow. Uh, the cover is right so, for her. So but she, they can't listen She's to real that. rowdy. What? She's a real rowdy lady. Are we sure we're not in the Museum of Sex? <laughs> 
we're gonna get there. We're gonna get to the Museum of Violence first. Yes. Oh, oh okay. right, the Hall of Violence. So yeah, I mean, he comes out. He cuts out uh, uh, Andre Gregory's eye to use a retinal scan, which is pretty cool. He's got a, on a little uh, pen there, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. Some nice like gore effects in this movie. And then like uh, a murder death kill is reported by the police. Uh, and why all... would you call it that? That's it's one his... of those stupid future things that we're just. We're doing to make it sound futuristic, but it's just super redundant. Yeah. Yeah. Murder death kills. And they don't and again, this is like they don't know what it is. And it's, 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 someone was murdered. Figure it out. People always get murdered. I don't care what, you know, what's especially if sex is outlawed, people are getting oh, murdered. Oh god, you don't even, <laughs> I, that this is even a civilization at all. Yeah, exactly. well that's ridiculous. They have something where it's like I think Benjamin Bratt, who's one of the cops in the movie, says like it's been 15 years since any murder uh, has been reported. Like, an, well, no, what did he say? An unnatural death. Wow. And I'm like, no, no. way, man. No one's <laughs> fallen off a ladder. You know, no one fucking drowns in the did, tub. Like, um, come on. Did they outlaw hammers and rocks <laughs> and fucking like box cutters as well? Wow. Well, no, they're all just underground with Dennis Leary. Sounds like you're going to have quite a time killing yourself later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hammers, rocks. Or no, box I could cutters. just get into a bathtub and take the stupid electric billy club <laughs> and fucking zap myself. Oh, yeah. Totally. Oh, that, yeah, like, you're telling me none of these police officers. Officers have fucking committed suicide by eating that baton in the tub. <laughs> Come on, man. That actually sounds like a great way to die. <laughs> Does oh, it? Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm well, not, that, dude, that's not an instant death. Think about, well, the toaster trick. Everyone knows, everyone's tried the toaster trick. What we all trick. call the toaster trick, yeah. <laughs> it's important that you call it a trick, by the <laughs> it way. It's also known as killing yourself. <laughs> Think about how inelegant that is. Yeah. You know, you got Because well, there's like crumbs in the tub after Yeah, exactly. I don't want to go to the nether realm with fucking crumbs. <laughs> And then you got that a cable. I want a wireless death. Oh, I like oh, that idea. Yeah, right? dude. Bluetooth suicide or bust. <laughs> exactly. Although Bill Murray did, so it's a little classier. Well, you got to get like the nice pajamas. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> go, to, uh, go, go to a nice B and B. Yeah. Fuck Satani, go there. So um, uh, Simon Phoenix goes out. He uses a console and he starts to hear uh, Nigel Hawthorne of all of all people. Uh, Who? Or is it Nathan? Who's the wait, one? No, it's, it's, it's not. Nigel, Nigel, Nigel Hawthorne. Nigel, yeah, the, Nigel Ferengi or whatever that fucking British guy's name is. <laughs> yes, Nigel Hawthorne. <laughs> no, oh. no, I'm talking about the Brexit. Oh, 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 oh not, Farage. Nigel Farage. 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 Right. Yeah. Okay, Man, yeah. that fucking turd. He, he might be a Ferengi, though. You I know? think yeah. he is a Ferengi. That guy looks like if uh, the 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 most current Doctor Who's face started fucking <laughs> melting in an acid-ridden mm. fart cloud. I'm, but I'm leaning more towards Ferengi. Me, <laughs> me, Islam is gonna kill us. Me, <laughs> that's how he sounds. I need all these octagonal coins, or Islam's gonna kill us. I'm like, oh, what, Nigel? What fucking part of England are you from, buddy? <laughs> I, I think this movie takes place takes place after uh, the Cal what Cal's exit or whatever. Those fucking ca- ca- these crazy Caxon. these crazy Californians talking about. Oh, they seceded. Yeah. yeah uh huh. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah. I guess we'll move there if that happens. But Pardon it's not me, I'm chewing happen. an ice cube. That's oh, no. very rude. <laughs> chewing an ice cube. Yeah, huh? I was chewing an ice cube. But like he gets it, and all of a sudden he's got these computer skills. <sighs> and man, this is fake using a computer. Forget which is, about I it. I hate the shit in movies. He's just like, dip, 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 yeah, dip, dip, he's, dip. he's hacking this system. Mm-hmm. And it's just when an actor, it's kind of the same thing as like badly fake playing a piano. Yeah. Just like, do, 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 do. Well, in his defense, uh, computers were pretty new, and he probably ne- <laughs> he probably never used one. Before. Uh, Wesley Snipes didn't use a computer. He didn't know any. He didn't, 19, know any ta- he didn't have on. Tax Act online. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did not download TurboTax. <laughs> no QuickBooks for that guy. <laughs> but it's ninety three. Like, come oh, on, yeah, right? yeah, that's like, true. No one's really using computers yet, besides yeah. us. So uh, he he dispatches a bunch of cops. He blows up a cop car. They're like, "Well, we gotta free Sylvester Stallone." The movie's called Demolition Man, guys. We come gotta on. get the the Demolition Man. So that we also have like the older Zach Lamb, formerly played by Grandel Bush, now played by Bill Cobbs, who of course you know from The Bodyguard. Oh yeah, he's great in that movie. 
<laughs> he's also in the color of money. Mm-hmm. So he's, uh, he's been around in everything. He's like, oh, yeah. you know, you guys don't remember the old days, and there's only one man that could bring down Simon Phoenix, and who would you, wouldn't you guess? It's the Demolition Man. <laughs> well, it's the only fucking you know uh, cop we had frozen thirty years ago. <laughs> and you know, this one time he like bungeed out of my helicopter <laughs> i really thought it was a bad idea but he seemed to gung-ho and le- he was so dedicated he jumped out of my helicopter yelling phoenix all the way down <laughs> what, you know what that's making me think okay so it's seven this is how many years in the future is this 70 ish 70 years so he's been working in this police oh, no, i'm department. sorry 40 years i'm sorry his sentence is 70 that's years. right yes. oh right 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 and he gets sp- sprung early <laughs> But, but no, to your point, he's been, he's, he's been like, why isn't he retired yet? Yeah, it's the whole like, well, they got me behind a desk finally. I was like, you're fucking 70 years old, <laughs> sir. You well, not be pushing anything. He's, well, not well, the, he's not the chief either, which is bullshit. Well, the thing is, they got you. He, maybe he has to. Maybe he has to keep working because they got rid of Social Security. Oh, right. You know, like, oh, like you right. will in about two months Turn, time. Yeah. Turns out that that whole voucher system didn't work and he needed to figure out health care somehow. Also, it turns out in this society, you do nothing all day. Yeah. Like if there's if you're a cop in this like what you're getting cats out of trees? Why that's a great but cats question. are probably illegal at this point because they're <laughs> people are allergic to them. That's right. Cats are bad for you. But what that's a great question, Chris Cabin. Why are there so many police officers? That, yeah, I guess just in case. There should be two guys watching a TV monitor. <laughs> you know, because it's the it's the one form of <clears throat> excuse me, it's the one form of socialism and <laughs> societal welfare that won't get protested. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh wait, wait, oh people work for the IRS? Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the tone that's, of this yeah, country. Yeah, and that's, I mean that's the tone of this movie too. It's like yeah. how, we, you know, what's going to save this country? Um, and a, a, a play by his own rules, overly violent LAPD officer. Okay, nineteen ninety three. Sure, that's what we need right now. He was great in the LA riots. <laughs> he did a great job. <laughs> he did a fantastic job in the LA riots, and you know what? Had we not frozen him, he yeah. would have definitely pinned down O.J. Simpson a lot fucking faster. <laughs> Actually, in this alternate timeline, do you think the O.J. Simpson murder is still oh, that's happening? That's a good question. Wow, that's yeah. a great question. And, you know, where is Mark Furman? That's, I think Mark Furman. I think the demolition man was modeled after Mark Furman. <laughs> or maybe the guy. Uh, it's not. I think the Demolition Man, it's the it's the same as Mark Furman, <laughs> just with 100% less using the N-word. Right, yeah, sure. Right. The, they the they war- changed the names because uh, they didn't want to get sued by Mark Furman because it's so similar. To well, that's I was going to say. <laughs> is copyrighted the N-word? <laughs> the warden from Shawshank Redemption, who is the captain in this, he could be Mark Furman just Oh, that's that. a good point. <laughs> <laughs> right. That would have been great if there was this like he had a name tag like Furman. Commandant Furman or whatever yeah. it is. is. Commandant. <laughs> Man, Here's- the best part, not the best part, but one of the greatest parts of that FX OJ Simpson show is the the end stinger of the one episode of Stephen Pasquale as Mark Furman the Demolition Man. <laughs> staring and drooling at Nazi plates in a oh, glass hutch. Yeah. That's the funniest fucking thing you'll ever see. Yeah, it's, it's a funny. weird show. It's, it's really, it's funny how uh, most of our heads of state now do that. <laughs> it's really, it's, it's not weird. all they're doing. It's weird. Pulling some weird. pud as well. Weird, wi- pulling some pud as well. <laughs> weird, wild pud. Oh, so also just to round out the office. Uh huh. Oh yeah, we can't forget. Oh, we got We'd Jim be remiss. And Pam, Jim and Pam. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta talk. If you're talking about the office, <laughs> you gotta talk about Jim and Pam. Or about Rob Schneider, oh, who's no. sitting in this movie. I think he literally sits the entire time. <laughs> he does. I actually, it's funny. I've seen this movie a bunch, but I hadn't seen it in a number of years. I remembered Rob Schneider being in it a lot more. Me too. Thank yeah. God he's only in it for yeah, like he's two a scenes. speck in this one. I you, mean, it was it was bad enough as Judge Dredd. He's a speck in everything, so uh, that's fine. <laughs> I think it's kind of acceptable here because uh, uh, Judge Dredd was too far. Yeah, and it's like this yeah. is very sparingly a little spice. And, you know, he's playing he's playing that nerdy uh, dork. So you know, but he's also condescending as shit to Stallone. When yeah. he finds out about the three seashells, which we're going to have to talk about. Oh, we and talk I about think right we can now. do that right now. Chris, take it away. Uh, so 
so Stallone's back. He's sure. in he's in his uniform. He's getting ready. His wife is dead. His daughter dead. is missing or something. And, and they, no, it's just like they they got they, abducted by aliens. They right? choose they choose not to look her up. Yeah. But she was, they did uh, cut out a whole section of this movie. That, what? Yeah, there was a whole, like, 20 minutes of footage of him knowing his daughter. And, like, Dude, I think wait, the wait, fucking, wait, I think, listen, I think the neighborhood kids stole my copy of the Tribune this morning. <laughs> I didn't have any of this on my doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true, though. Yeah, that, apparently she's in, she's down with Dennis Leary, like, hanging out. No! And there's a shot what? of, like, him saving a girl that's in the movie proper. That's the daughter? That's just that's the daughter. The what daughter. the flying fuck? This movie was cut to ribbons and we'll get to one of the greatest cinematic deleted scenes of all time <laughs> unbelievable oh so, but uh, yeah. also on the tribune did anybody see stallone explaining why what he thinks the three she, she he, wait, 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 he's writing on the tribune he had an interview <laughs> where he explained what I, he listen, thinks i'm glad you're bringing this up because ever since i was a child and i watched this movie a thousand times i've always wanted you're to know gonna, how i clean shit out of my ass you're gonna be listen. really disappointed so let's set it up he goes to the bathroom he comes out he's right like, everyone's like he's like where's the fucking toilet paper and rob schneider's like he didn't see the three seashells well actually in the 20th they used wadded paper so so apparently, so I mean, Stallone's like, I, I don't know what to do. Um, <laughs> shows, but apparently, Stallone, this is how he explained it, and it's it's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. All right, yes, I know. He takes, give it to me. So you're supposed to take two of them, and when you see these things, it doesn't look like you take them off. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're you're supposed to touch very something. small what? seashells. Yeah. You rub your ass. So on? you're supposed to take the two of them, and. I don't know even how to explain well, it. You, you, take you, two would of push, them. you would push out like half the turd and then take two <laughs> seashells. You're clipping the turd? To yeah, pull it out. Like chopsticks. And, and then take a third Ooh. one to wipe and scoop the shit out of your no ass. Way talk, about the, talk about the curse of the black pearl. <laughs> How long have you been sitting on that? <laughs> Just a second. But nice. The shit, shit smell on your hands for days. Good luck getting that off. <laughs> what did paper? Well, cleaning you your ass. It would be like like a like a beam, like a yeah. pleasant, like yeah. Vroom. Yeah. I just that's thought, thought it was like thought. a bidet, and you touch the fucking seashells, that's, and it happened. Yeah. Because here's a great question: If you're chopsticking it, like Stallone is saying, cleaning my ass. <laughs> oh man, he's just playing the piano. And taking a shit in his pants. Yeah, could you get a uh, glass table over this toilet? Uh, <laughs> That's where the seashells are. But like, if you're if you're doing it the way he's presupposing you do it, sure. Are you sharing seashells with the next person? How many shells are we going through? Is, or is it self cleaning or something? Also, are they they look like they're hard metal? That's a problem for me. Yeah. And what I mean, mean what? hard metal, just a seashell. But no, the, the, when no, you they're like, they're, they're like, metallic. are they metallic? Yeah, yeah. they're not oh. actual seashells. Oh, see, so maybe therein lies the problem. See, but That's also, you're it's cleaning a... up these fucking seashells every time you take a shit, and you have to put them in the fucking think... sink. And not like... to mention the no. only food you're eating is Taco Bell. Oh my God, <laughs> the only food you're eating is Taco Bell. E. Maybe that's why you can use the se- the three seashells though, because everybody just has fucking diarrhea. <laughs> that's, that's a fair point. You might as well just use a fucking. Clasp. So you only need one seashell, then I guess. They, totally, they have to be self cleaning. No way is everyone required to wash. Or them actually, wait, maybe that's a job in this timeline. Oh, is you probably. get all the seashells, you throw them out in the parking lot, <laughs> and then an old man with a metal detector comes along like it's the beach, and he starts <laughs> sifting through it. But but the dead ceiling. Fire the seashell cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> so here's so he comes out. He's like, what was so funny about the seashells? They all laugh at him, and then like there's this other running gag wherever you curse, uh, paper comes out, and uh, you get a ticket for like five credits or whatever. It's one moral one security cow. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, one credit for whatever. It's like what vulgar morality. They don't have money though, so like who where are these gives credits? a shit? But the thing is. So he's, he has this whole scene where he comes out, he's like, oh, Simon Phoenix, seashells. And then he's like, I got an idea. You duck fucking something or other. And he, he does this whole thing. He gets all this all these credits. Then he goes to the bathroom to clean his ass. So he comes out yep, yep. with yep. a shitty fucking ass. Yep. And he's just yep. smelling up there like, oh, my God. Oh, ass. God, I got to know what the seashells are for sure. Oh, by, fuck. By the way, he's been 
frozen for 40 years. Yes. What is coming out of there? Well, That's exactly you right. You know he had pasta carbonara before he went in <laughs> because like it's his last meal. Last meal, tortellini, <laughs> big sausages. <laughs> no, 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 no. It wasn't like he knew it was his last meal. That was just his Olive Garden dinner he ate before he went on shift. He got thrown right to that oh, that's icebox. True, that's true. But and also, this is uh, those are tight pants. Those are those tight are pants. Tight pants. He's still looking pretty small. Like he's not like Stallone juicing yet in no. this movie. Not, not, not Stallone and Stein like he is sometimes. Stallone and Stein. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, <you got> him. <laughs> but also, if the world has changed so much and the fucking air is cleaner or whatever the fuck, <laughs> like. Wouldn't there be maybe a possibility that that would just kill everybody? <laughs> they smell his shit and they yeah. just die. So <laughs> they all just get wiped out. There's some disease in his asshole that got oh, unleashed when he was on I, I, I like this theory. <laughs> it's the, then the second half of the movie is like contagion or something. Yes. <laughs> Chuba <laughs> is a blogger talking about Stallone's fucking fecal matter. <laughs> Dude, oh, I'd love it. That whole room just drops dead. Roger Pedactor, who's in this movie, starts throwing up all over the place. <laughs> Man, you want to watch that dude throw up, by the way. I bet that would make me throw up. <laughs> Watching Roger Pedactor fucking hurl chunks with that high and tight haircut he's had he's got, for 70 years. He's great. Um, that guy came out of the womb with that haircut. I think we're at the Hall of Violence. We are. So yeah. He's like, I, I guarantee you. If there is a gun in this world, that's where Phoenix is going. And everyone laughs at him like, but there, he'd have to get it in a, a museum. Oh, and and that's, that's, that's also just where, where yeah. he is. And that's where sex lives now. <laughs> but if, here's the thing. If, if, you're trying to, if you're creating a society where you're trying to suppress violence, why would you have a hall of violence? This that's, is an, um, an impressive like, arsenal. They, that's like having a a, 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 a a gay sex film course in, in Liberty University. It's, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. You, you're trying to suppress and pretend this thing doesn't exist. You don't want to teach and show people what it is. Dude, you just... I got a great idea. Okay. All right. We will go to Liberty University's <laughs> campus. Okay. With a bunch of flyers. And we'll have gay sex with all of them. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have gay sex with the flyers. No. We go no, with students. a thing that's like at the student union, whatever, this night, we're playing cruising. <laughs> Put that up all over the but campus. they might like that, though, because it, it plays into that narrative of uh, the uh, evil oh, gay villain. Yeah, that's true. All right, They so could like, read it wrong. I'm, I'm pretty sure they could oh, read so it like wrong. So like six degrees of separation. Yeah, just, or, just, um, just get some fucking good old-fashioned gay pornography. Yeah, get, find know. a good old-fashioned tube and go for it. The lawnmower man can <laughs> dig it out of the uh, external hard drive. <laughs> I'm just saying that's a good prank. It is, it is a good prank. Well, yeah, you know, you say you're playing Toy Story 2, and everyone's like, oh, that's that's oh, a fun movie kind yeah, of that's about That's the Jesus. better prank, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then it's Weekend. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> weekend. Is, Not a dry eye one. in the house, I guarantee it. Oh, yeah, they, that is, would change uh, it. What's the, uh, Kevin, what's the movie um, where we're having a bunch of gay sex by the lake and someone gets murdered? Stranger, oh, by, the Stranger lake? by the Lake. Yeah, play that movie. Say or a short playing. bus. That would really oh, fucking wake them up. <laughs> Wake them right up. No one's waking up at Liberty University, that's for sure. <laughs> and, and to your point, it's very stupid to have a hall of violence. <laughs> but here's the more stupid thing. Okay, please. If you want to have a whole thing of all the guns, okay, I can see some kind of historic, like, from an engineering oh, standpoint. I know where you're going with this. Why would you have any ammunition? Yeah, <laughs> that's a great yeah, Why, why are the, the weapons, fuck would you have why any are the weapons ammunition? functioning? <laughs> Just yeah, leave it yeah, alone. Remove the firing clip or something, like... Make sure that they can never be used. It, it makes no sense. And he clearly, apparently, it's a fucking stockade back there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because he wages war on this city. Body count of this movie, by the way, in uh, top line of the Tribune, 72. That's a good body nice. count. That's Very what I want good. in a Stallone movie, 72 people it's dead. It's pretty good. Like, yeah. the way he breaks into that, into the, uh, to get the guns is by throwing some dude through, <laughs> through the glass. That's through pretty awesome, because he's trying to Wesley Snipes karate kick the window, and it's not happening. And he goes up to the dude, and he's like, how much do you weigh? And he just, like, picks this guy up and throws him. It's the well, second yeah. lanky white guy he fucking eviscerates in, in such a fashion. There's that one guy who's using the computer terminal, and he fucking sidekicks that dude out of the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's great. I love it. Uh, and, yeah, so Stallone, then they have their fight, and they're just shooting guns at each other, and they're not going to hit each other, sure. This is around the time where one of the dumbest lines in cinema history happens, because, like... Wait, and now, we didn't mention what's your boggle. That's what I'm talking <laughs> oh, about. Oh, what? Yeah. That, that's what the guy says before he's thrown. 
Yeah, he's like, excuse me, sir, uh, what's your boggle? And he's like, I got my boggle, and like picks him up and kills him. It's yeah. so good. What's your boggle? I love That's it. That's fucking great, stupid. There's some other great expression. What's your papomatic trouble? Uh, be well. Also, be well. Also oh, be well. Stupid. Stupid. A very fucking stupid. stupid. Oh, the, the contactless <laughs> high five I hate that oh, Benjamin Bratt and uh, Rob Schneider have where they do like a, it's a high five, but they don't meet, and then they kind of like... Yeah, window they wave each other. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's well, fucking well, stupid. Well, Steve, why don't you enhance your calm? <laughs> oh, man. You well, know, why does everyone talk like a stupid baby robot in this movie? Can we just stop? You know what? You know what? That's where we're going. <laughs> you, everyone wants to be nice to each other. That's what I mean. That's what this movie is. It's it's like a, a, a critique against liberalism. Like, hey, you hide all the guns, then all all you need is one good one bad guy with a gun. Then there's no good guy with a gun. You yeah. got to get a good guy with a gun to get him, right? That's Special guest tonight, Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> Clint Eastwood the... loves this movie. <laughs> Clint He's Eastwood actually, feels uh... like he woke up in the set of Demolition Man. <laughs> I can't believe it. 30 years ago, I was drinking with an ape. <laughs> hey, you fucking dirty Korean. What's your boggle? <laughs> Oh, your food's good, though. I'll kill you anyway. We actually have an empty chair right now in the room. Oh, there literally okay. is an empty I chair. It represents Clint Eastwood. Yes. He's always with us. Never and forget. I, I'm glad that you brought up uh, Koreans. Uh, because... <laughs> Well, I try whenever I can. Well, because one of the more racist things in this movie is when Wesley Snipes enters this museum. Oh, right. And does the, like, ching, ching, chong thing. It's, it's to not it. worth repeating. Yeah, it's I not mean, worth repeating out loud. But, yeah, he does a little bit of something. At, like, apropos of nothing, though. He's standing by a car. <laughs> he sees a family. It's a family. Oh, is yes. that what it is? It's an Asian oh. family. He's passing by him, and wow, he decides to it? do it. <laughs> Well, fucking asshole. He's a bad guy. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> he's a villain. He's a villain through and through. Boys throwing, will be boys. He's throwing sure. people through windows. He's not a nice guy, Chris. So they're driving. Stallone, Benjamin Bratt, and Sandy are driving to this museum. Mm -hmm. I'm backing up a little yeah, bit here, I realize. Because one of the things we have to mention also, in this fucking dumb society, and this makes no sense whatsoever, uh... Music is like outlawed, and all they listen to is commercial jingles. Sure, uh, the Jolly Green Giants, man, and, and, the, and the Oscar Meyer hot dogs. Yes. Armored, no armored hot dogs. Oh yeah, armor hot dogs from the Simpsons. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, it's from the '60s. It's from the '60s. <laughs> I know it from the. I, I yeah, never yeah. ate an armored hot dog in my life. But uh, they they actually didn't come up on our list of hot dog rankings a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. We can't go back into hot dogs. We'll, no, we'll no, be here no. all night. No, 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 no. Uh, no. It's just it's one of those stupid gags where it's like, so what are you trying to say? Like music. Music's getting so commercial that we might as well just listen to commercials. Nobody likes rock and roll no more. Oh, yeah. the liberals took over. I think that's it. I think it's like we rejected the news. Because no rock musician's ever a liberal. Uh, what's what's Ted Nugent's uh, nickname? The news. Stupid asshole. Yeah, we that. rejected stupid asshole, and suddenly that's all. You know, we we're 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 we're, we're less uh, masculine. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. To the point of. Listen. Singing about hot dogs. Exactly. Well, yeah. also, and that goes back or to... Or listening to podcasts about hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and that goes back to the language again, where, like, when he's at the... Ter when when uh, Phoenix is at the terminal, like, the thing comes up and says, we hope you're full of joy, joy feelings, and, yeah. like, all this other horse shit. And, like, <laughs> and then they have to call everybody who makes an infraction a maniac. Yeah. Like, he's like, approach the maniac. <laughs> oh, that's Tell the weird. maniac to leave. Re I missed that <laughs> detail. I love this detail when the cops first approach Simon Phoenix and uh, they say, like, like you know, and now add or else. Yes. <laughs> like, if it doesn't work the first time, oh, tell yeah, the they're getting like to lay down on the ground with his hands behind his back. Add or else. He's just throwing people like footballs in this movie. It's great. Like, everybody's just getting chucked by Wesley Snipes. Well, so it's, it's a weird, like, thing that's never entirely explained, and we can just get into it because it doesn't really matter yeah. most of this movie is just shootouts but like so he's been brought back by someone on the inside mm -hmm. the guy who's like engineered this nigel whole thing. hawthorne and so the whole thing when you're under this like stasis when you're frozen they rehab you with like you know brain programs or whatever but so his program has been like super fighting weapons <laughs> and tactics and whatever but somehow he's also been like Made super strong. I yeah. mean, he is just throwing people like one arm 
hucking people into the sun. And he has this like constant droning thing. Don't you have someone to kill? Uh, Mr. Friendly. Edgar Friendly. Yeah, Edgar Friendly uh. must die. It's just like that Star Trek episode. <laughs> I love it. Edith. Uh, hmm? What's her name? Uh, Edith Piaf. No, not Edith Piaf. <laughs> Although I've been walking around for years saying Edith Piaf must die. And oh, really? <laughs> but, then, but then it turned out that you know she's been dead for years. For quite some time. Yeah. Now, that you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The city on the edge of forever, whatever right, it's called. They go they across and... the street and it's a big problem. Right, right. Yeah. She doesn't get hit by a truck, so... It was... Uh, so, like, President Trump happens. Right. Well, thank- Thanksgiving, um, BBC America was doing a Star Trek marathon, oh. and I turned it on, and it was that episode, man. That's one of my faves. That's great a great one. episode. T.O.S. Of- Anyway, that just had nothing to do with anything. So um, uh, he runs into uh, uh, Nigel Hawthorne and his assistant, uh, Glenn Shadix. Uh, Otho. Otho. And uh, basically, like, he realizes what he has to do. He has to go kill uh, Dennis Leary. He uh, is sort of saved by... Uh, um, he or he basically, uh, Wesley Snipes cannot kill Nigel Hawthorne. So has right. been programmed uh, not to. Uh, so when he runs away and Demolition Man comes after him, he's like, oh, thank you for saving me, Demolition Man. Might <laughs> I uh, invite you to a, a grand dinner to Taco Bell this evening? <sighs> now, I think we have to get into, I think this is a Berenstain, Berenstein situation. It's, it's a whole, it's a, it's a, it's, I, I watched this last night. I, I bought a, a, a used DVD from a used DVD store that must have emanated from, outside of the u.s district that, and that is scary stuff can you believe dude other countries are making dvds <laughs> i don't like it <laughs> and i'm watching it and I, i've shut it's... it down do you hear hear about these regions these regions on your dvd player regions we got it out loud dvd players are weak we're going to get rid of them everything is region one if you're doing standard def if you're talking 1080p blu-ray it's only region a region b can fucking suck it <laughs> four more years yeah. four more years <laughs> so uh but i'm watching i've seen this movie a million times yeah and i'm, I'm waiting for the taco bell bit because the whole bit is like the, there's a whole thing there's a, there's a war between the franchise the, wars. The franchise wars and the only food anyone eats is taco bell sure and i I'm mean waiting. listen there are as far as andrew jupin is concerned Worse future predictions for food. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I'd be fine with it. But I'm, also, it, like th- they were talking about prequels for this movie being about uh, Phoenix and uh, Spartan John Spartan. Yeah, uh, Stallone's name. Why not have the prequel be about these franchises? The fran- oh my That's, god, I franchise really war. need to know about this. I shit. need to yeah. see it. You know how yeah. you could do it though, real easily these days? A Zack Snyder motion comic. <laughs> <laughs> Get a fucking DVD of that. I put just, that out. I just have this um, like, like gritty in, Ronald McDonald. I have this <laughs> image of Ronald McDonald just walking over the dead, <laughs> like bloody hands. But then he like, gets he gets taken out. Yes, because he doesn't survive by the Burger King. And then he gets taken out <laughs> by the Bell. Yeah, yeah, it would, it would, would have to. The, the dog would have to come back to Chihuahua. Wendy is just fucking biting throats out. Of, <laughs> Wendy fucking pulls Grimace's intestines out of his asshole. But now, did we say what your version had? But Wait, so, before we get into it, because no, it's, it's on my mind right now, and I'm sorry to keep stalling. But did you guys? Did you hear about this? You hear about this? No. Today, the creator of the Big Mac passed away. Oh yes, no! Wow, yeah. good riddance. <laughs> The biggest shock is it's 2016, and how has that dude not been dead for 30 years? You think years? he's eating Big Macs, dude? You think he's eating a Big Mac since 1979? Yes, I do. All right. At no, he's, 97 he's, years old or dude, whatever. Because you know just, you're getting no. a free fucking sandwich at sure. any outlet. You pull out the card, and it's like, I invented the Big Mac. Free Big Mac, no, please. But he made those to sell the rubes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. He's not, he, he was like, oh, I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> But also, I guess I was confused because I just assumed that Ray Kroc invented the Big Mac. Oh, you got to watch that boring movie. You'll find that right out. Oh, the uh, the founder. Yeah, the founder. founder. Is that ever coming out? It's coming out. Yes, yes. it is soon. Yes, very it's, soon. It's being released eventually. I'll, uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll stay tuned to not care. This month or January. But I it mean, stars uh, America's greatest white, white actor. actor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Our favorite white actor. So he, uh, so, um, but in mind, so I'm like, oh, here comes a Taco Bell bit. He's like, oh, come to me with, to Pizza Hut. And I'm like, what? What? And my fiance never saw it. I was like, that's all right. 
That's all right. Don't listen to that. That's, but, that's, that's, that's not right. But that's insane, though, because right there, Steve Zadak is thinking like his entire existence has been a lie. And or like, he's in a different part of the multiverse. And I'm like, oh, OK, maybe they said that once. Maybe I forgot the one line. And then they say, let's go to Taco Bell instead. But maybe then, like, Pizza Hut was too full. Let's go to Taco <laughs> Bell. They, they drive around in different There's no lot. tables at Pizza Hut. <laughs> But no, he, and then uh, there's, and you can totally see it because then, uh, what you would call it, Sylvester Stallone's like, why does this guy want to tell take me to Pizza Hut? And it's like such awful ADR. And I'm like, oh my God, everyone. And then she says the franchise war thing. And I'm like, oh my God, no, Taco Bell won the franchise war, not Pizza Hut. No, I changed it when I became president because... I did a commercial for Pizza Hut, and they were a fantastic organization. They got cheese in the crust. And Taco Bell, is fr- did you know this, Chris? Chris, Chris, Chris Cabin? Yes, did you president-elect. Know, did you know that their tacos are from another country? <laughs> and that if, if, what? if Hillary run the election, there'd be Taco Bells in every corner. <laughs> I, love, is- I love that that was an argument, by the way. You're going to have taco trucks everywhere. Oh, I fucking Wish there yes. were taco trucks. Exactly. I would at that moment. I put celebrate good times on my fucking computer. <laughs> oh. Just goes like, yeah, bring them on. Oh, bring I'd be dead on. because I'd be going corner to corner. Yeah, I'll get another one. Yeah, I'll get another one. Oh, I'd yeah. never get to work. Oh, you got salted pork on this one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god, I'm sorry to interrupt you again, but you're Chris Cabin. <laughs> yes. You know, I usually masturbate to my daughter Bianca. Uh huh. Well, I <laughs> but, mean, naturally. but but I rarely have I seen a total babe. <laughs> Like Chris Cabin. <laughs> well, I mean, I do appreciate that, uh, President Elect. I but, sit uh, up at, at the penthouse in Trump Tower. That's where I live, and I pound my stupid little orange pud to the face of that total babe cub, Chris Cabin. <laughs> I am edging all night on, <laughs> on, on, the, and then I go on Twitter, and I edge some more. I'm glad that you found your you your fetish, and it's me. Edge in a Chris cabin. So they are just at this Taco Bell everyone or maybe puts it's on a their, Pizza Hut. That, yeah, well, that, that, in my version, everyone's saying, uh, basically, I think in, in England, because Taco Bell wasn't everywhere, they had an alternate version wherein they just put in Pizza Hut because that traveled better all over the world. Apparently, Pizza Hut's at the four corners. You can get Pizza Hut in Antarctica, I you guess. You <laughs> penguins are eating fucking Pizza Hut in Antarctica. Ta- Taco Bell isn't in the UK. That was the big thing yeah. is that there's no market. I mean, their biggest other right. market at the time was the UK. So, oh. uh, like, there's digital replaced logos for the most part of Pizza Hut. It's fucking strange, but man. they miss a few. They do miss a few. Yeah, I've seen I, I caught that. So they're, they're eating this Taco Bell. Uh, which is, it doesn't even look like Taco Bell, really. No one's eating chalupas. No, it's just, well, first of all, this is before we started serving chalupas at Taco Bell. I think this that is was even pre like, Yeah, I mean, those were like 2000. Dark, dark I mean, we, yeah. we, had to, we, had to, uh, we had to elect uh, Bush, too, before that stuff happened. <laughs> no, this, we're talking about like your soft taco supreme, your chili cheese burrito. Hey, Poppy! You can put two tacos <laughs> on top of each other and separate them by hot beans! <laughs> It's a pretty good idea. Yeah. Now, W, you gotta <laughs> you gotta deep fry that thing, and then you'll really have yourself a meal there. Hey, Poppy, you know they make Mountain Dew in all sorts of colors now, right? <laughs> they got a Mexican one called Baja. It's blue. Oh no, it's nine eleven. Code red. Code red. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I've drank my fucking body mass in Code Red Mountain Dew. The, the fact that I do not have diabetes yet uh, <laughs> is a feel is a failure to the Mountain Dew Corporation and Code Red. I would if it ever like I must be immune to it because I would have contracted it by now and it would have been type Mountain Dew diabetes. <laughs> You have code red diabetes. <laughs> you would. It's there's so much sugar in that, thing. dude. I would have fucking Baja Blast diarrhea. Diarrhea's. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um. So they're eating, and uh, Stallone. Uh, this guy's name is uh, Doctor Cocteau, and he runs Los Angeles, and apparently has no influence anywhere else in the world for some reason. <laughs> and he's like, he, he's trying to make Los Angeles a better place, and uh, he's like expounding upon uh, the cryogenic. Uh, 
freezing process and apparently Stallone was awake the whole time, which wouldn't that just make you crazy? Like wouldn't you oh, wake yeah, up you would and really be a insane. babbling idiot because you can't like move? He's bullshitting. He just wants to like be, you know, be a big man. Hey you Shane, know? you watch me freak out this square. I was awake the whole time. I made up all this stuff about my wife coming and pounding on the glass like a fish tank. She didn't visit. Oh, man, my wife came. She's crazy. She was pounding on the glass. But then she remembered what I liked. And then she got on top of my ice cube and defecated onto it. Going to tell you the truth. Going to tell you the truth here. Uh, cock hurt the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I went cocktail. I went in a little hard. It was really bad. <laughs> That's got to be a thing, right? They were probably like, "All right, dude." Like, you know, what's his name? John Hammer. John Spartan. <laughs> oh, John Spartan. Sorry, Spartan. Because they all have the stupid like. Yeah, this no. is what I, like, I am. Yeah. yeah, I like John Hammer. That's, <laughs> well, maybe that's a brother of Mike Hammer, detective. Oh, yeah. There you go. Is so, it like they're like, "All right, you know, Spartan, get in that bathroom because you got to evacuate everything oh, before yeah. we like." No. Can you imagine you got on fucking dump brewing and then you get in this ice cube for 70 years and then you kill all of los francisco (laughs) whatever it's called so i mean whatever uh uh, this is broken up because dennis leary's gang who's just a a gang your your classic uh it's a gang of rat kings (laughs) your classic gang of utopian under dwellers we all we've seen them a thousand times they're called scraps in this universe they should be called chuds (laughs) or or they should the scraps should team up with the chuds (laughs) kind of hey come on chuds let's go (laughs) <laughs> Once we get down there, it kind of looks like uh, the monster market from Hellboy 2. It does, a little bit. <laughs> or uh, any of Super Mario Brothers. It looks a lot like Super yeah. Mario Brothers as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, a lot um, of greats. We're, going, we're coming up to my favorite scene in any movie ever, which is... <laughs> so there's like a fight, and like Stallone impresses Sandra Bullock a little bit because he beats up these scraps. He learns that, oh my God, they're just fighting for food, and that's so sad. And then Sandy Bullock, Bullock's like, hey, man, you want to come back to my place for a bit? Sandra Bullock, by the way, is really good in this movie. She's like, she's yeah. very good. She's the only movie. one that understands what this movie's about and how yeah. to make the jokes she's supposed to make funny. Disagree. I f- and I Whoa, told you this earlier. No, I, I agree that Sandy's in on it, but also <laughs> that I think Benjamin Bratt is in the same boat. Yeah, he is. Yes. They're both because they're both actors. They, yeah. They're not fucking. Right. I mean, Wesley Snipes is good in this movie, but he's on 11 the whole time. He can't really do it. Well, he has to be. Yeah. I mean, he's uh, doing Black Joker. Also, speaking of. <laughs> Not, not my joker. Hashtag not my joker. Speaking of not actors, um, <laughs> Rod- missed- no, no, you dare talk about Roger Protector right I'm now. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> oh, I'm talking it. about the first instance of Dan Cortez. <laughs> oh, right. At oh, the Jesus. piano singing, not singing, ADRing Jolly Green Giant. <laughs> oh, man, that is fucking Like a stupid. lounge singer, so like a, doing a Richard Cheese a bit. <laughs> oh, what, you man. forget about me, babe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, damn. Step Cortez. off, George. Just step <laughs> off. The yeah, George, G- step off. The Jolly Green Giant. Hey, thanks for coming out. <laughs> <laughs> So, but they, Sandy's like, "Hey, come back to my place," and I'm like, "All right, it's 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 1993. Who knows it's, what's gonna happen? Sure. It's a real now we're talking situation." And she's like, "Well, of course, you know, you, there are studies about like uh, violence and sexual desire and blah blah blah." Right. She's like, "I'm gonna go slip into something more comfortable. Why don't you sit down?" And still like, "All right, where's?" What kind of table you got here? Which uh, four poster? Yeah. That's not going to do uh, it. We're gonna, we're, listen, we're going to need to move those magazines <laughs> off of there. I yeah. want no coasters wait, on this. Wait, wait. You can keep your cockies. That's a pretty. That's pretty exotic. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is this? Oh God, Redwood. I'm out. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to have to leave. Sorry, Sandy. Sorry, Oxley. We have to discuss the fact that he's trying to have sex with a baby. <laughs> well, that's she also true. Is yeah. A Baby, well, she's not even. A, she's not even a baby. What, what she's well, like he's like he's like seventy years well, older. Because and she's like not even born yet. Well, the, what are you talking about? Well, she's she, the age. The difference. age difference is, is extreme. But also, it's not. He's not seventy. I mean, he's on paper. When was he born? He's seventy. <laughs> there you go. He got frozen in dragon tears, Eric. There are different <laughs> rules for this man. It's not like she's fucking the grandpa from Texas Chainsaw this, Massacre. No, here's here's what the man. twist should be. He never looked up his daughter. Oh no! And then in the end, oh wow, dude, so oh, he was fucking that's his daughter, dude. A, that's a twist I can stand by. <laughs> but the proposition is baby talk as well. She's like, I would. Would you like to have sex? Yeah, but they're all stupid like that, though. Yeah, she's just doing her bit. So, so like, so step. they're stupid like babies. He's <laughs> she's technically a baby. This he's, is bizarre. So she comes back out and, and she's wearing like a kimono. 
she hands uh, Stallone this like jewelry box, and he's like, "What is this for? Is this like a dog collar or what? Or what are, just, are you gonna put this on top of the table or can, what? Can, does this thing un- unfold into a table? <laughs> <laughs> no, rotating <laughs> ass beads. What are we talking about here, Miss oh, Bullock? Do I take a dump inside the helmet? Is the but he puts on this little like it looks like a little uh, I don't know like a, a a wireless headset. It's like a Tron helmet almost. It's actually, a complete ripoff of uh, a really not well known sci fi movie called Brainstorm with Christopher Walken. Oh, I and they have the exact same like helmets. Oh, oh really? Oh, exactly. Isn't that uh, directed by what was that guy's name? Douglas Trummer. I don't. He directed no Silent idea. Running. Uh, oh, he did special effects for 2001. Oh, I Trumbull? Th- yes. Or- yes. Douglas Trumbull? Yeah. I know the guy. That you, yeah. I think it's him. But let's carry on with yes. your your uh, weird VR sex you were talking about. So, well, the greatest detail, first of all, is they're going to have this sexual intercourse. And not only does she hand him this helmet, she gives him a towel. Yeah, you know what that's for. So, yep. because fucking the, cleanup crew. She sits out <laughs> across, she sits across from him. And she closes her eyes and she starts making sort of sexy noises. And he's like, well, am I just supposed to? Oh, he closes his eyes and then he sees like, it's like Star Fox sex. Where it's, she, you don't <laughs> Hey, <see> Andros, <laughs> bend over and I'll show you. <laughs> Bibidi-babu. <laughs> Your father fucked me like that too, Fox. Boy, I, 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 I. My no, no, my no. Oh, welcome to my it kind of looks like if you fast forward through a, like an experimental Kenneth Anger film. Yeah, like, yeah, it's totally light colored lights. Well, I thought it was Star Fox though. Correct? Okay, <laughs> do I add, yeah, okay. But like, why is it like that? Would actually be a great edit if someone put that on YouTube where it's like Scorpio rising and Chad <laughs> showed in these. <laughs> Why is it just her face though? Like theoretically, because she was she wanted to be an uh, she wasn't going to do like Skinamax kind of no. Movies. And I'm not saying she has to. You sure. get a body double. Oh in yeah, there. yeah. Well, you know. But like yeah, to your point, this, yeah, is, this is a hard R violent profane movie. I need a there's or boobers. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're gonna get it. In five there's minutes. a random. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, there's a random boobers. But Don't so worry the idea is like he pulls it and says, "What the fuck is this? Why am I not fucking you?" And she's like, "Well, <laughs> because you know, sex is outlaw." And like we don't do fluid swap or anything like that. Transfer or whatever the fuck. And by the way, uh, (laughs) apparently in this utopian society, like first there was AIDS, then there was this, and then there's that. I'm like, it's been 30 years. We've gone way past AIDS already. And it's just like there was GTA, (laughs) BTO, and USD. No, not BTO happened. (laughs) There's Blue Oyster Cult that was there for a while. (laughs) Fucking NWA, (laughs) ELO. <laughs> ILM, but yeah, this is this is a situation where, like, I honestly think if he fucked her, she would explode like <laughs> Lois Lane getting fucked by Superman again. It's Ooh, just stuff Smith coming out, quote. like the stuff coming out. Who yeah. knows where he's been? Wait, yeah, what, what his stuff? His because stuff yeah, like, because like his pipes are all weird. It's gonna come out yeah. cold. You no, think? because every. <laughs> No, I think no. it means it's weaponized from all the STDs he got. Because, well, to Chris's point, like everyone in this universe, yeah, this time true. is so clean. healthy and germ free and clean and whatever. Yeah. You got this fucking scuzz bag dude from 1996. <laughs> God help you. Named yeah. the Demolition Man. Yeah, like, dude, come man. on. He you see is. These That's people... like going back in time and sneezing on a dinosaur, right? That's exactly right. I mean, you see these people walking around the streets of the city now. They got the medical masks on because yeah. they don't want the germs. Think about that, but with hey, your dick. Hey, can I sneeze on your dinosaur? <laughs> can I sneeze on your table? <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, you're, uh, what, 60 years younger than me? <laughs> well, he says, like, oh, come on, Huxley, that's great. You, you don't do the, the horizontal mambo, the hunk of chunka? Man, the hunk of chunka. <laughs> He's, One is hilarious. Two could be a great Ben and Jerry's flavor. He also starts with just plain old boning. <laughs> <laughs> you think, yeah, you know, Stallone starts with what Stallone knows best. You think when he has sex, it's a hug a chunk, 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 hug a ch
it ends with Hug him and hunking sugar. chunks. He's hunking chunks up. <laughs> He's puking. <laughs> he pukes on her. No, He's into it's puke vomit fetish. sex. Uh, yeah. I, I fuck so hard I puke. <laughs> It happens to be more often than not, so I call it the hunk of chunk. One stallone, no cups. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, yeah, no. dude. I couldn't find a cup to puke in. Fuck yeah, I'd watch that 50 times. <laughs> but that's what's that's what's gross. The grossest thing about this scene is because like you got Sandy Bullock, and she's like into it with the helmet on. Yeah. But then you got Stallone, and he's like, ugh. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 and he's like licking his lips. Like, oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. Oh, he almost gets there and he doesn't. He stops. He's edging. <laughs> he does actually. In 2032, we're still edging. Thank God. So she like <laughs> it's the one thing they can't take away from us. Right? She kicks him out and uh, much because like, he tries to kiss her. Yeah, she's like, "Ew, ew, that's gross." We're gonna do fluid transfer. He's like, eh, eh, "We'll figure that out." Which is so, so stupid because it's like, "Hey, by the way, you can't get AIDS from kissing." Yeah. Oh, exactly. well, yeah. You should know that 2032. Yeah. Oh, maybe you could get fucking BTO or ILM or ELO or any of these <laughs> exactly. other ones from kissing though. Get that's a actually fucking outbreak of Dolby Digital. <laughs> He goes, I got a fucking mean case of Atmos. So because Martin Cinemax was watching the screen, he got his he got his uh, Oscar screener a month a month in advance. Mm-hmm. Well, Demolition Man, that sounds wonderful. Sounds like an exciting sexual movie. A hard R. I know what this movie's gonna have. All right, all right. Oh, what the fuck is this? What the fuck? Why am I not seeing her tits? Get, get him on a, get, get him Outlawed. On. Outlawed. <laughs> Sigh. So he's like, on his speed dial. If you dial, want my fucking 1045 slot on Cinemax, you better fix his movie. I would say the number three speed dial on Cin- <laughs> Martin Cinemax's <laughs> phone, I think, is probably still on. Oh, number, yeah, sure. <laughs> number one is definitely Van Damme. <laughs> Talking about weird sex stuff. So he got he gets this little D, this little tiny DVD or tiny CD that uh, a, a tiny laser laser disc really yeah. of uh, of uh, uh, security footage. He's got to put it on. He's like, yeah, I put, can't believe I couldn't even have sex with that. Bro. How is he not going home to jerk off? That, I mean, the that's way. the question. We Maybe he did bring. that in the self driving car on the way home. <laughs> Anybody see what happened to that towel? Well, no, he he's he's right on the hall from her. They're in the same car. Oh, are they sharing a dorm? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So. He puts this on, and he gets vid-phoned by this nude babe, and she's like, <laughs> oh, hi, Martin. Oh, sorry, wrong number. And I'm like, <laughs> so stupid. First of all, it's a sexless society. Who are you? Like, Or maybe phone sex is huge. But oh, she's not doing it to be sexy. That's what's so stupid is yeah. she's just like, because she's got a towel, and it's yeah. like she's just like just getting out of the, the shower, shower yeah. and she's calling somebody to make it. But like in the world of vid-phones, like... <laughs> You better pray that that's a fucking private vid phone. <laughs> what if it was Martin's boardroom? And I mean, wrong numbers are pretty like it happens, but sure, like it's, it's rare. pretty rare, right? Yeah. Like, what are the odds? And it, <laughs> listen, it, Stallone, I'm gonna give you a reel. I have a couple of reels of wrong numbers. I just <laughs> just in case there's a sci-fi movie that needs it. I have them playing in my house on a big screen, twenty four seven. I love a good wrong number, a good sexy wrong number. Just a bunch of naked women saying sorry. <laughs> uh, oh man, can the lawnmower man find me that? <laughs> oh, there, it's out there, man. The uh, truth is out there. <laughs> I mean, he he discovers that in this tape that Cocteau is in on it. And, right. oh, my God, he talks to Wesley Snipes. He he harasses him at his boardroom the next day. That's- Which is great. That's a scene where, like, he's just shooting wildly. Like, somehow, I think he stole an active gun from the sure. Museum of Violence. Which has got to be a, a freezable offense. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's going back in the fucking Arctic mist, man. <laughs> Uh, Is that a Mountain Dew flavor? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he realizes he's going after Edgar Friendly, so he takes a crew down to the to the depths. Uh, it's Benjamin Bratt and uh, Sandra Bullock, obviously, and they right. down, and they kind of make up. And she's like, oh, "Sorry about the hunk of junk, Alessa. Sorry about jerking off on your door after you kicked me out. <laughs> I mean, that was a pretty aggressive move, but you got to admit, seventy years." She's like, "Oh, that was you." <laughs> It was be well. So 20th was century. <laughs> the sick 20th century move. Um, and we can't miss at the same time. This is so they're going down to get Edgar Friendly while uh, Phoenix is oh, with that's right. Dr. Cocteau. And uh, he's like, 
Uh, 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 I'm going to need uh, a whole team of vigilantes. Oh, right. To back me up on this. And, and who does he free, unfreeze first but deleted scenes Jesse Ventura, who is in the opening credits but does not have a single line of dialogue in this no. movie. This is criminal. It this is, is outright fucking he criminal. Has, he has like three grunts, I want to say. He like maybe. laughs a bunch. Yeah. Which I hate that shit. Let him say something. And like apparently like, there was a big fight scene between Stallone and Ventura, and it, it got cut. Of all the things hey, that had to get cut. I, I, I'm so excited. We, I, we watched this video. It's a WCW interview with uh, Ventura. <laughs> Conducted and, by Eric Bischoff. <laughs> obviously. Uh, for something called Manly Movies, by the way. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, that's nice. And Ventura is just like, oh, I'm so excited to be with Sly Stallone. I was like, when I got on set, I was like, let me at that Italian stallion. It's been <laughs> 10 years in the making. I was like, what? So, like, 83? <laughs> what was going was on? Was he, like, cut from a Rocky? All right, Stallone. <laughs> I know after you fight Clubber Lang, then I show up in Rocky 3 in the four-hour cut of Rocky 3. Uh, little known Hollywood fact, <laughs> I was supposed to play Thunderlips. Yup, I was supposed to be in Demolition Man, pretty big part, but I got into a pretty mad feud <laughs> with one Robert Schneider. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, Sly took sides. I, I gave him a noogie. He did not enjoy it. You know what? To this day, he'll deny it, but I was the inspiration for the making copies bit. You know, I had that suburban commando uh, role just locked up, and that dirty motherfucker Hogan came in and took it from me. You Nobody knows this, but I actually wrote the original screen treatment for Mr. Nanny. Another one where the rug got pulled out of old Jesse Ventura. Hey, yep, it was supposed to be Mr. Butler. <laughs> Stallone fucked me out of that, too. I can't believe it. I was supposed to play Estelle Getty's role in Stopper My Mom Was Shoot. Taking the bread right out of my mouth, Stallone. I was also... <laughs> I was, yup, I was also supposed to play her part in the Golden Girls. <laughs> Rose, sit down, Rose. See, I, I tested so well. Back in, back in Sicily, we used to have a saying. Stone, <laughs> Stone said I could maybe audition for that role in uh, Creed of the homeless man on the corner. But Ryan Coogler, he just shot me right down. He's a nice guy, though. Nice he, guy. Yeah, but I got beef with Coogler big time. <laughs> he promised me a role in Black Panther, and that phone ain't been ringing. <laughs> I got the whole Marvel movie franchise. I was supposed to play Captain America. It was going to be skinny Chris Evans, and he gets pumped full of a lot of shit, and then he's a 60-year-old beefcake. So he's sort of barely in this movie. Like, Which sucks. Around. He's, a, fe he's a featured extra. I mean, for people like us, losers, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> who yes. see Jesse Ventura in a movie, you're like, here it comes. Mm -hmm. Drop that hammer, Ventura. And he's just like, <laughs> yeah, gone. He, he gets all these, like, well, Simon Phoenix gets all these prostitutes out of nowhere. Where did these prostitutes come from? Oh, they were also America? unfrozen. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> unfreezing that's a lot of work. But getting back to Jesse even short, because that's all this podcast is. Sure, 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 sure. He was also basically cut out of Batman and Robin. He was. There was this weird trend in the 90s where we didn't want him. Which is, that's a shame. It's a damn Has shame. Has anyone watched that show with him and Larry King? No. It's Wait, him. is it a sitcom? No, it's, it's him, yep, Larry it's King. it's me and Larry. It's a situation comedy. It's him, Larry King, and we like... run a bagel shop in fa on Fairfax. <laughs> and we take down all the squares. It's him, Larry King, and some other conservative guy on like... Larry King is a liberal, uh, the conservative guy is conservative, and Jesse's kind of in the crazy <laughs> middle, I guess. And wild they do like card. talking. <laughs> Back in Minnesota, they call that a wild card. <laughs> it just really stands for fucking crazy. I voted for Jill Stein twice. <laughs> There's your voter fraud. <laughs> 
Yup, discovered my own voter fraud. <laughs> I was going to go for that Gary Johnson, but then he did that tongue thing, and that just grossed me right out. <laughs> you got to know what Aleppo is. Listen, I might be an idiot, but you got to know what Aleppo is. You know, that was a goddamn shame. I got cut out of Gary Johnson's campaign. I was his <laughs> VP pick. Oh, my God, I would have voted for him. <laughs> oh, guaranteed. Oh, At yep. least I would have had fun on that election day, that's for sure. <laughs> One vote for a Braxis, thank you. <laughs> the country's in the toilet, that's fine. Speaking of <laughs> ridiculous presidents, well, besides Ventura and Trump and whatnot, but apparently Schwarzenegger was the uh, oh, right. was president in this in Demolition Man. Because we get mention of the uh, 61st Amendment. Which is amazing. How, how, many, many, how, how many? What are we what, doing? What are they? What are they? <laughs> I want that list. Yeah, that yeah. needs to be a Tribune thing where, like, it comes up on a computer screen and some fucking nerd paused it and, like, you know, wrote yeah, down every yeah. single one of them. That's a lot of amendments, That's a man. lot of amendments. I mean, it, again, like, what does the rest of the world look like? I need that. It's got to be just all burned out. So they go down. Um, uh, Stallone has a rat hamburger, which looks pretty good. I was getting hungry. <laughs> he seems to be enjoying it. And, and somehow we're still making beer down here. Yeah, I know. Look, bottled, we're bottling beer down there. He's got a fucking ice cold Coroni right there, <laughs> man. I couldn't believe it. Uh, and like everyone's like, ew, you talked to that Mexican lady. And the, the weird <laughs> thing about this movie is like, so Zach Lamb is up there and uh, uh, Benjamin Bratt, but everybody else is white up top. But down downstairs, it's much more racially diverse, but they yeah. don't talk about it. We're going to build a wall. <laughs> it's called a road. <laughs> And they're gonna all anyone who's not white or a member of the Ku Klux Klan <laughs> is gonna live under that road. The mole people. We are going to create the mole people. <laughs> I promise you, on day one, the Chuds are getting out of Manhattan. I'm gonna burn them alive. It's gonna be fabulous. You should tune in. I'm gonna do it from Trump Tower. <laughs> and we'll make, aired on CNN. We will make the Ninja Turtles pay for that road. <laughs> So Dennis Leary is doing the classic case of like when you hire a stand up comedian to be in a movie or TV show oh, and yikes. all they can do is regurgitate their stand up uh, for reference. He does a tight five, right? He does a tight five, dude. I was going to say for reference, see TV lands the Jim Gaffigan show. Yeah, Listen, I love Jim Gaffigan. Sure. I don't need to see his fucking stand up comedy transcribed into a sitcom. Sure. That show is unwatchable. And but this yeah. is this is just him like, yeah, I like to be down here. I like to read books. I like to smoke cigarettes a mile a minute. I like to eat a bunch of ham and a bunch of raw steak. I love smoking. I love smoking. You know what I would like? I would like to eat a hamburger, a big fucking cheeseburger. And I would like to have the American flag stuck in it. And then I would like to read a Playboy and jerk off while I do it. He's able to do this because they froze Bill Hicks a couple of years yeah, of earlier. Course. Oh, yeah. Hicks got frozen. And- he he raided his house and just got all his notebooks and yeah. was like, "Yeah, here we go. That's a That's, career." Yeah. <laughs> so won't be needing these anymore, <laughs> dead man. <laughs> so there was there's a big shootout as always. Uh, I mean, this, we're getting towards the end of the movie here, right? Like it's just the, yeah. the last like yeah. half hour of this movie is about four different shootouts. Yes, yeah. and and Ventura doesn't even get a death. He, oh, at this point, although uh, so like. There's a big shootout, and then like they go, they all kind of retreat back, and Friendly's still alive, and like uh, Cocktail's like, "Didn't you kill Edgar Friendly? I can't believe that I had to unfreeze twelve pe- twelve professional wrestlers to kill Dennis Leary. I mean, what the fuck kind of deal is this anyway? You've been fined one credit. You know? <laughs> You've been fined one credit for failing to assassinate the maker of comics. Come home." <laughs> So uh, he can't. Uh, Snipes can't kill him, but Jesse Ventura, his number two, yep. blows him away, and then picks him up and throws him in a fire. And they're all just <laughs> cackling. It's pretty great, it's, dude. And this guy is just cooking. It's awesome. And Otho's like, "Oh, I'll work with you now because I'm just this guy. It's fine." So sweet, Bob. <laughs> uh, and yeah, so I mean, the last act of this movie is a car chase, sort of. There's a car chase chase. to the cryo chamber where we're trying to unfreeze more fucking people or something. Mm -hmm. This is where uh, uh, Wesley Snipes has some line. He's looking up like who's in there. He's like, ooh, Jeffrey Dahmer. I like that dude's style (laughs) or whatever. No, you don't, dude. You're a different kind of criminal. You're not killing small men and eating them. Yeah, I haven't seen you eat one person. (laughs) Yeah, Show me your fridge. Show me one dick in that fridge, dude. (laughs) 
I would love it if they do unfreeze Jeffrey. Well, by the way, the funny thing is Jeffrey Dahmer had died by the time this movie, not oh, by the time this movie sad. came out. Oh, what a, a fucking flub. It's a tragedy. Oh. The, the nation wept when Jeffrey Dahmer died. <laughs> no, I think by the time it went on home video, it was like re- weirdly anachronistic. And I think there are other versions where what? Dahmer where is cut out. Where it's replaced with pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, pizza. <laughs> Like My favorite <laughs> serial killer, Pizza Hut. I like his Pizza style. Hut's probably killed more people than Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, ever without easily. a doubt. Man, Jeremy Renner as Pizza Hut. <laughs> that would be amazing. Oh, man. There's that, you know, that guy that killed all those people in Wisconsin, Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> he made all those sex zombies, Pizza you know, he, Hut. He cut their dicks off and he put them in jars and put them in their fridge. Yes. Pizza Hut. Yes. Pizza Hut. That he is... worked in a chocolate factory. <laughs> Man, Pizza Hut worked in a chocolate. Oh, I can't factory. wait for uh, that new movie uh, coming out, uh, Pizza Hut and Me. That's a great <laughs> about Pizza Hut in high school. You yeah. watch that documentary, dude. The Pizza Hut Files. <laughs> you could sure stuff a crust. <laughs> oh Lord! But so they're all fighting, and and there's a lot of uh you know rope swinging going on. I would love it if Je- <laughs> Jeff Dahmer comes out and bites the load's neck. <laughs> Oh, and then he turns into a zombie. <laughs> I work, I work for Phoenix now. I'm going to get him for you. Oh, hey there, Phoenix. I'm so happy to be working for you. <laughs> Played by Steve Buscemi. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what's going on. Growing green in it, but also we get our second Dan Cortez here. What? what? There's a second Dan Cortez. You get Whoa. double Cortez, wait, dude. Wait, wait. Two He's, different roles. When, yeah, a totally different role. He's one of the scientists when they're like unfreezing everybody. He's out in front. When he's like, all right, sir, we're almost done. And you're definitely not going to kill us. So, hey, <laughs> job well done. Hey. And then they, he blows them all away. All right. Here's, here's my writer for this movie. <laughs> I want my trailer to have no less than three narc arca- arcade games. <laughs> I, want, I want nothing but Taco Bell. And I want Dan Cortez to play not one, but two roles. I mean, you guys watch MTV, right? Dan <laughs> Cortez. Mark my words, in this year of our Lord, 1992, when we're making this movie, Dan Cortez will go on to be a legend in television history. He might win an Oscar before I do. We'll see. We'll see. It's going to be a real foot race. He'd Which already won be- an Oscar by this point. Oh, that's right. Uh, well, I, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're trying to writing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. else is gone. But Dan Cortez is still here. <laughs> I'm all up on that wall, but Dan Cortez is right here. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, he freezes uh, uh, Simon Phoenix and kicks his head off. It's a real cool death, it which is, is right. awesome. Great and death. I think isn't he there... used the dragon tear like he's about. Uh, uh, yes. Phoenix is about to cut his head off or something. And uh, Stallone hits him with a dragon tear and he freezes right up. Isn't there? Isn't that a callback to like the opening scene of the movie oh, where he's God. got something about like I want to knock it, your head off or no, something it, like? Is it cold in here? No, well, no, he, no, no, no. At the beginning of the movie, there's some line. He's of, like, oh, I don't know where I put those passengers. It, you know, if my head wasn't attached, it would fall right. That's up. that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, you're totally right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. and it's like wink. It's gr- it, when it Pizza hits the hut. <laughs> when it hits the ground and it just shatters, you see what? all the red spots. Oh, it's yeah. so well, that's, cool. That's it's a the, Mortal Kombat death. It's it one, is. It's, it's classic. Cool. It's, it's pretty, pretty good. I, it's, a, it's a good death, you know, yeah. honestly. And th- what I do appreciate about this movie is it's finally like so many times it's like Sylvester Stallone versus Bob Balaban. You know what I Bob mean? <laughs> like, oh, he's the he's the mastermind. You know what I mean? And like at the end, he's just like. I'm going to show you what's what, Balaban. Like, <laughs> as a, at least it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fitting fight, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> That'd be, be... Bob Balaban. <laughs> I would love to see it, though, right? You want to know it? I know it. I know a personal nickname for Bob Balaban. Oh, yeah? This is a weird thing. I was at a screening for New York Film Festival this year, and I was sitting next to somebody of note that I will not drop, oh. but... What, she, she, was jerk, she was jerking off in the movie. Yeah. Yes, she was jerking <laughs> off. <laughs> Fred Willard. Fred Willard was sitting next no, to her. No, it was Manchester me. <laughs> it was me. I was at the premiere. <laughs> no, but so this this woman was talking to a friend of hers, and she's talking about Bob Balaban, and she's like. Something, something. I called him on the phone and I said, Balbs, you got to come over oh, here. Bal- and I was oh, like, Balbs, wow. I need to be on a Balbs basis with Bob Balaban. Yeah. I fucking by the end love of my, Bob Balaban. Of, of course, he's the best. I would love to be on a Balbs basis with Bob Balaban. I would kiss his feet. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Balbs, if you're listening. And I don't mean to be disrespectful, Balbs, but... 
if I can call you Balbs just once. <laughs> what was it with the 90s and decapitating villains in action movies? That's a good point. Yeah, this is, I'm taller, hey. <laughs> yeah, he what a makes, shit on your frozen body. He makes body. no quip, which <laughs> no. is fine. But this movie's full of quips, though. That's actually true. Also, the thing of the gag, the running gag of Sandy oh, right. Bullock, like getting uh, expressions wrong. Yeah. Like she's, she means to say things like, I'm going to kick his ass. She says, I'm going to lick his ass. Well, no, he, he says, she's like, oh, you're going to go lick his ass. And I have to think about Stallone licking Wesley Snipes' <laughs> ass. Hey, that's all right. I'm uh, all right. It got me I, halfway one there. I always <laughs> remember is uh, take this job and shovel it. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's I'm laughing. Mm hmm. Uh, there was, I'm going to go blow him. Instead yeah. of, I'm going to blow him away. Yeah. And, and the gag is then like, away. that's got, the thing. You got to <laughs> blow this guy away. The gag Uncle is Chunko. Stallone then like corrects her every single day. Blow him <laughs> away. <laughs> Take this job and shove it. I'm not going to lick his ass. I'm going to kick his ass. Maybe I'll lick his ass. I don't know. If that ass is on top of a table, <laughs> I will lick it. <laughs> Speaking of licking ass, we haven't really gotten into what happens at the end here with the political climate of oh, the yes. city state. <laughs> right. So apparently now it's going to be a it's it's it, Edgar Friendly survives. Uh-huh. Yeah, He's going to help Leary. rebuild the civilization, I guess, with um, the chief of police. So it's like a. It's sort of like a military coup in a way. <laughs> well, it's, it, but then they're actually going to work with Edgar Friendly. So that's. But it's sort of like something? it's the exact same ending as Judge Dredd, where they're like, yeah. hey, Sylvester Stallone, what do we do? And he's like, you're going to work together. <laughs> We're going to move forward. I got a table to shit on. <laughs> yeah. well, if, I'm not gonna, that's, it's the same thing, though. It's like, I'm not going to help out with it. But here's what I think you should do. Well, he's do. like, All right, you guys got to get a little dirtier, and you guys got to get a little cleaner, and we'll get you a good space. And it's like, what this fucking South Park horse shit? <laughs> Not everybody's a little bit wrong. Yeah. <laughs> there also hasn't been a murder in 20 years. Let's keep a lot of that, actually. Let's yeah. figure that shit out. Yeah, totally. How can we not have Just murders? Take away the cursing machines. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's a good start. Number one on the, your list. Get rid of the Pizza Hut Taco Bells. Bring toilet paper Ooh. back into the fold. <laughs> yeah. Please, God. Increase wrong numbers. <laughs> <laughs> what is this at the bottom of this list? Increase wrong numbers. What does that mean? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> It doesn't mean Trust doesn't. me. <laughs> Look, uh, I don't want any job where I'm not able to beat the shit out of people on a regular basis. Oh, well, right? actually, num- A number one has to be fuck it. We, we're going back oh, to yeah. fuck it, everybody. We definitely are because they're making out at the end of the movie to that fucking terrible Sting song. Oh, uh, yikes. I'm going to give you the L I M. L I M. Gonna give you a fucking hard case of BOC, baby. Some DMR for you. <laughs> gonna put some USA in you. <laughs> fucking chock full of That's EDM. what he says every time he has sex, by the way. I'm gonna <laughs> put a little life. USA in you. <laughs> a little bet- USA all over this table. That's because this movie was probably played on the USA Network nonstop. nonstop. <laughs> oh, you know, but I still got those sweet checks from the USA Network. It's pretty good. <laughs> By myself, a whole pack of bubble gum. <laughs> Uh, obviously, on this anniversary show, this is a four star recommend, is it not? Yeah, I, no. I've seen this movie a hundred times. It's pretty. It's a little longer than it needs to be. It's almost two hours. We're which, pushing yeah. it. You know, it's like a little bit. I got kids here. I want to go to bed. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, what are we doing, Demolition Man? A clean hundred minutes would have done sure. fine. It's super fun. I mean, the violence is all over the place. And like I said, yeah, it's cool to watch two, like a good guy and a bad guy fight each other. You know what I mean? Like, let's get in there. Let's mix it up. Let's get get in there and do it. Yeah. You, you don't have to suffer too much Dennis Leary acting. Uh, this is, you know, a lot of fun. I watched <laughs> this, you know, again, a hundred times. And we still, we sure. got this from Columbia House, by the way. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, wow, yeah, really? This is the Columbia oh, House goodness. pick. I had... Wait, VHS? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. This was on TV all the time. It was. I remember... But here's the thing when I was, I think it was HBO or something. And it was like, I don't know, the movie had just come out. I missed it in the theater. And they started doing the promos for it coming to TV right. like over a year in advance, like, <laughs> like August 95 or whatever. <laughs> and they would play this all the, and I would watch TV non, I watched HBO nonstop. So I was always seeing it. And yeah. I was just like, one day, it felt like forever and <laughs> a day. And eventually, that day came. You got that. It was great. And then I watched it a thousand times. 
I've actually only this is well, this was only my like maybe third time seeing this. What? Wasn't a Chris Cabin what? Midnight Special? Oh, no, 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 really? No, no. Wow. No, I was actually more like when I think of Stallone, I was more of like Cobra. I I, I really? watched Cobra a bunch. You're Cobra. more of a Rhinestone man. I, oh well, of course, Rhinestone. <laughs> Cobra. I, don't, I don't even think I've seen Rhinestone. <laughs> oh, no, th- that's a one. trip. That's mm-hmm. a stay tuned. Cobra is kind of a great movie. Too. Cobra is great. Isn't it Cobra where he's like taking down a cult? It's like a police cult he's, or something. He like the other guy is the head. Like he's like a religious leader kind of. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. No. Oh, you've I, never seen. I've Cobra? actually never seen. Oh, Cobra, so that's, oh you yeah, should check watch it out. It's, bro. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> this movie or Judge Dredd? Oh, uh, this um, movie. Yeah, this movie, Demolition Man t- times ten. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's May- better. Look, here's the only reason you need, dude. This this movie has 97 percent less Rob Schneider. That's also a really that's good also point. That's all you need. Mm-hmm. That's- <laughs> yeah, I think I would probably go for Demolition Man as well. So that is the end of our anniversary show, and at the end of and every anniversary also the show, end of we ate movies. We have to announce that. No, that's not true. <laughs> that's I not gotcha. True. No, we are we are continuing on for into now. the into the next year, but. A big thank you to everyone for following us over the years. And if you found us just now, thank you for continuing with us. Uh, uh, We do the program because people listen to it. We wouldn't do it if nobody listened because what's the point of that? It's kind of weird to have people that you know for like five or six years that you've never met. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it's that that lady. Oh, that dude. That guy. You know, these are cool people. I love you guys. There you go. There you go. And that is Demolition Man, directed by Marco Brambia. Uh, for more We Hate Movies, check out whmpodcast.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Write into the mailbag. Of course, we all hate movies at gmail.com. Uh, going into next week, what do we got going on next week? We're getting into the season next week. Tis Ooh. the season. Oh, it's getting a little chilly out. So. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. I frost. wouldn't want. I wouldn't want. Want Jack Frost to bite my bottom? That's we've already a, done Jack Frost. Wait, no, but there's but, another movie that Jack but Frost wait, appears there's in. Another the, Jack. Col- the coldest figure of all, Tim Allen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is the Santa Claus Three with Martin Short as Jack Frost. This movie is really unwatchable. Okay, uh, so we'll be doing that next week, getting into the holiday season. Uh, speaking of the holiday season, man, go to our website, whmpodcast.com. Click on that shop button. takes you to our merch store. Mm-hmm. Pick up some holiday gifts, man. Speaking of Jesse Ventura, we now have <laughs> uh, you know this great new design, uh, probably Secundus shirt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right, from our, our good buddy, Philippe Sobrero. Right. Uh, great design. Uh, check that out. There's, you know, mugs iPhone cases, laptop cases, all sorts of doodads and whatnot for uh, people you care kind of less about. Uh, go to the merch <laughs> store and check that out. Uh, go over to Etsy, Google, or Google search on Etsy. Oh, and uh, we you, hate movies. Buy some posters there. And if you feel generous, you know, it's the season of giving. We have a Patreon page yeah, right. where uh, we're doing all this bonus content. Sure. Our Star Trek program called The Nexus. Animation damnation. Oh, all sorts of good stuff. Some some commentary, some sleaze. Mm-hmm. We should have a commentary coming out very soon, actually. Oh, in, let's... in addition to our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one that's already up there. Yeah. Do we want to tease that next commentary? Why not? He's coming to take you for the second time. Taken to Mentary. So until next week, where we're talking about the Santa Claus 3, I'm Andrew Jupin. Steven Sadak. Eric Siska. Chris Cabin. Take it easy. was a really tough time for me. I, I just couldn't catch a break. They, they cast me as the third triplet in 90210. It was Brenda, <laughs> Brandon, and then Bobby. And I was Bobby, and they cut me right out of that pilot. I was actually one of the parents in uh, Kids. And uh, <laughs> Larry Clark, you know, he's, he, he, he's a master filmmaker. A little weird for me. A little, little bit of a strange duck. Uh, you know, I was supposed to be Marcellus Wallace in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Figure out what went wrong with that. I was supposed to be Kazam. I'm not going to bring it up anymore, <laughs> but I was supposed to be Kazam. <laughs> Love Shaq. Great talent. You know, I was the uh, third writer on Goodwill Hunting, actually. <laughs> they cut my best stuff. It was me and Ben and Matt just sitting down in Boston talking about stuff. 
You know what really boils my ass? I was originally cast as propeller guy in Titanic. <laughs> Got chopped right out of the movie. Do the Right Thing is a great movie. Now, I'm not saying it's not a great movie, but I was supposed to be on that wall. It was a bunch of Italian actors and me, and they could they cut out the nod, and I was real bad about... I called up Spike that night, I'll tell you that much. I was supposed to be Max Cherry and Jackie Brown <laughs> until Pam Greer got cast as the titular Jackie Brown, and, uh, well, let's just say she and I got problems. I was actually supposed to be the hurricane in the hurricane. <laughs> and that Denzel, he just stole that, that role right out from me. Yep, and I also, I, I screen tested for Travis Bickle. And I love I love Marty, does good work. Um, I think it was Harvey Keitel that shafted. 